respect and honor beautiful soul we are back for another thursday podcast and today i am talking to you about the psychology of greatness i am brandy l bates you can find me on twitter at soledad francis and you can find me on instagram at brandy is winning and as i've mentioned before you can find many of these podcast archives on youtube i want to just start off by saying thank you if you're listening at this time um to all the ears to all the minds to all the hearts to all the souls that are under the sound of my voice i just want to reach out and say I have so much tremendous gratitude for you. Thank you. You could be listening to any number of things right now with all the noise we have going on, but instead you chose to take the time out of your busy day and your life and listen to me. And I just want you to know that I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart and continue to rock with me and roll with me. And I promise there will be uh, gifts for you ultimately in your in your life and in your in your world so today we are talking about the psychology of greatness um i think it's important to remember that everybody starts at the bottom everybody starts at the bottom okay even those who are born into wealth and affluence um they still have to go to school. They still have to take their lumps just like everyone else. They may not have as many lumps as uh, some some of us have, you know. And I say it all the time, you know, we like to believe that life is fair and that there's, you know, all men are created equal. And, and it's just simply not true. Um, life is not fair. And if you don't know that yet, if you're over the age of 21 and you don't know that yet, I'm sorry to break it to you, but life is not fair. Life is not fair. The world is not fair. And all men and women are not created equal. In fact, men and women are not created equal. And there are certain favoritisms and certain um, perks that come with you know, being born into a society of wealth, being born into a Western society. There are certain rights and privileges and gifts and blessings and things that come with that that will not come with you, uh, you know, being born in some third world so-called, quote unquote, developing nation. Um, there are perks and, and gifts and privileges that come with being educated or having educated parents who make a better living in this world so you know with that being said it's just it's just a reality and i think that we need to stop acting like it's not a reality and that you know you you can work very hard but if you don't have a dad in the in in or a mom in the organization that's helping you pull you know get pulled up someone who does is going to have a little more advantage over you so you know let me just put that out there but, but in spite of that, everybody does start at the bottom. Everybody has to still learn their own mistakes. And that's the beauty of life because it has its own built-in shit. You know, even when you think, that's why I tell people, if someone has ever pissed you off, you don't even have to do anything. Don't, don't feel like you need to get them back or get revenge or let me tell you something. If your heart is right and your mind is right and you are a good person, you have a good heart, you are a good soul, you don't do anything to wrong people or to hurt people or to get over on people, and someone hurts you or someone wrongs you or does something unjust to you, I promise you, it will come back to them tenfold. Karma is real and life has its own built-in mechanisms to make sure that people are dealt with appropriately in more magnificent magical ways than you could ever possibly imagine and the same for you 
You know, you may think that you're guilt free if you don't have a good heart, if you know you've shit on some people and you know, some of us, we've made some mistakes. You know, you may have shit on somebody or hurt someone and I hate to tell you and hate to break it to you, but that too is going to come back on you. It's going to come boomerang right back at you. So just with knowing that, you know, treat people how you want to be treated because that is the way this world is designed. Today is the best time to start from the bottom though. In, 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 in any way you want to look at it financially in terms of technology in terms of um, education in terms of the options and the opportunities that are available to us it's like never before i've said it before no matter what your gift or your talents are no matter what your purpose is no matter what you came to this planet to do this time is the greatest time to be alive in, in bringing your gifts and talents and purpose to the world. You have unlimited capacity for marketing and advertisement, unlimited capacity to really build your shit from the ground up, out of the garage, out of a bedroom, out of nothing, out of the heaps and shambles of whatever. You can literally build yourself up from nothing. And we know that this is true. And we know that this is possible because it's happening every day. So when we know that one can do it, many of us can do it. I'm not going to say everybody can do everything, but according to your strengths and abilities, you can. And if you don't know how to do whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, you can learn. It's understand that one concept about greatness, people people see the greats. You know, the, gr the greats take, you know, Serena Williams and people like uh, Michael Jordan and Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, you know. Um, number one, they started off as novices just like anybody else. They didn't, they weren't born with these innate, you know, talents. They had to learn how to cold. They had to learn how to dribble a basketball. They had to learn how to uh, hold the racket properly, so forth and so on. Um, but one thing about what separates the greats from those who are not great is the way they handle adversity, the way they bounce back from adversity and hard times. Um, because there's two types of people in this world. There are those who are literally creating the life of their dreams, walking in their calling, walking in their purpose, utilizing their divinity to help build the life and the and the you know reality of their dreams and then there's everybody else take a good look at your life which side of the line do you stand on but it's through the adversity that our strength is forged and understand that you're more resilient than you think you are. You're stronger than you think you are. You may not be as wise as you think you are, but you're stronger than you think you are. And I think that we all have, again, like I said earlier, life has built in little tricks and trap doors and tests to grow us and to, uh, discipline us in its own little ways you know uh you may think that it, it's it's like a parent you know and any parent who has more than one child knows each child is different so what works for little johnny may not work for little tiffany so case in point you know growing up i had i have two older brothers what was required to discipline my brothers was not required of me in other words my brothers had to get beat. They had to be, they, they were still, you know, 
mess up and 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 you know try my parents but me they could just say something crazy to me and i was so sensitive as as a child and i still am to a, to an extent but i was so sensitive and delicate that just screaming at me using harsh words i would be shook you know and i would straighten up so anyone who has two kids three kids four kids they know each child is different each child requires a different level of discipline. Some kids don't require much discipline at all. Some kids are really, really good kids and they just do what they're told to do. They stay in line, you know, they're good kids. They, you know, they they listen to what they're told. They believe, they believe what you say. If you say don't touch the stove, they don't touch the stove. And then there's those, you know, <laughs> there's those hard head ones that they're gonna try you. They are going to try you. If you say the stove is hot, don't touch it. They're going to touch it to see if you are telling the truth or not. You're going to say, don't run out. Don't run out in the street. They're going to run out in the street. You're going to say, stay in the yard. Stay where I can see you. They're going to try you. They're going to go to the corner. Then they're going to go a little bit further to see what you say or do. So, you know, they require a little bit more discipline. And it's like that in life. Some people require a lot more harsh discipline because that is what is needed to get them closer to their purpose and what needs to happen. Whereas other people, they don't make those kind of mistakes because they're like, you know what? I can learn from everybody else. And I'm one of those people. Instead of me, life is really short. So instead of me spending 20 years to make 20 years worth of mistakes, you know, I can look at somebody else's failed marriage, somebody else's failed careers, somebody else's uh, life that's been shattered to the rocks, shattered on the, on the shore because of drugs and alcohol or abuse or what have you, you know, whatever. And I can say, you know what? I'm good. I don't want to take that path. I'm not going to go down that road. And I'm saying that to you, that is the difference between the greats, not because they're so special and they're so magnanimous and magnificent and, you know, they're rare. It's that they are able to, their learning curve is shorter. They make the mistakes, get them out of the way so they can go on to the next level. And I'm, I have a very important thing to, to say about that in just a second, but you're more resilient than you think. And that is why sometimes we're tried and tested the way we are because it's to make you stronger in the areas where you may be a little soft. You know, sometimes I like to believe that none of us is put through anything that we cannot handle. And I've said it before and I always maintain to say it, what doesn't kill you can only help build you. So no matter what you are going through, I don't care what your struggle is. I don't care if it's financial. I don't care if it's physical, your health. I don't care if it's, you know, lack or scarcity or fear or whatever it is. If it, if it does not kill you, if it does not kill you, you know, what do they say? But did you die though? <laughs> Life will say that to you. But did you die though? If it does not kill you, if it's not killing you, if you're not dying in the process, then it is there to strengthen you. It's there to show you and prove to you and remind you that you are stronger than you think. You have more uh, gut than you think. You have more grit than you believe and you can last longer you can endure this whatever your adversity is but my question is my question is what do you do when you plateau what do you do when you started the business you know you were all excited about it. New Year's resolution. This is something you've been talking about and dreaming, and it's on your vert. Uh, it's on your it's on your vision board, and it's 
you know, you, you're saying your positive affirmations, you're going to bed listening to your, you know, your, your, your beats and your beta waves and your meditation, sleep meditation, you're waking up in the morning, you're praying, you're, you're in meditation. I mean, all of that, right? But you're, you've reached a plateau and you started a business but the clients aren't calling, the customers aren't calling, they're not rolling in like, like you thought they would. Uh, what do you do when, when you committed to a fit lifestyle? You committed, you committed, this was your resolution. You resolved, this is gonna be my year to get my shit together. And the scale is just not moving, you know, you're, you're repeatedly falling off. You know, you just, you can't keep up with the shit. You're not going to, you're not going to work out the way you, you know, you told yourself you would, you know, in fact, you're gaining weight. You know, it feels like you might possibly be going backwards. What do you do when it's no longer working out? What do you do when the shit that you used to do is not working anymore? When, when, when the relationship, you just are not feeling it anymore. You're not feeling them anymore. It's just not moving you anymore. You're not feeling it. It's not working for you. And the things that you used to be able to do, they are no longer, uh, they're no longer effective. The shit you used to be able to do to get over the hump is no longer working for you. What do you do? Cause it's real easy to say, oh, go ahead, you know, leave your job, start that business until the phone is not ringing the way you anticipated. It's easy to say, you know, go ahead, jump. And you jump and you're falling and you're in free fall. And that parachute does not open. The fear, the anxiety, the agony, the sleepless nights, the resentment, when the relationship is not working, when you've put your feelings out there on the table and it's just not working, when your family does not understand you, they don't understand you, they don't get it, what do you do? And I'm saying that these are periods of growth. Everything in life is cyclical. Everything in life is seasonal. We never have summer all year round. We never have autumn. We never have spring. As much as we love spring, it's beautiful and everything is in bloom and the butterflies and the blue skies and the perfect weather. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. It's just beautiful, but it only lasts for a time. But in that, remind yourself that it's only for a time. Do you hear me? If you can get that, what I just said, it's only for a time. Your plateau is only for a time. It is only for a season. You're never gonna continue to plateau. As an entrepreneur, business is, is the business cycle is seasonal. No matter what business you're in, with the exception of, of uh, what, what do we say? The, the morgue is always in business. The graveyard is, there's always customers for that because part of life is death. But short of the morgue business and the mortuary mortuary business, every business has its ups and downs. The stock market will always have its ups and downs. We'll always have recessions and depressions, booms and busts. We'll always have ups and downs. Everything in life is seasonal and cyclical everything because it's it, 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 it's built into life it's built into nature and and when you're going through these periods where you you know you started the business and it's not panning out the way you expected or you you're in this relationship you love this person but you just you're not feeling it anymore or you know you're working on your you, you thought this was your calling you're working on your dream you're writing that book 
or, or, you know, you're working on your life's purpose, whatever you believe that is. And it's just, you're not feeling it. And it's not bringing in the joy and the money and the energy that it once did, or that you thought it would. I will say to you that that is part of growth and growth creates complexity. They almost go hand in hand. Growth and complexity go hand in hand. So wherever growth goes, complexity is right there tagging along. And wherever there's complexity, please know that there's growth in the process. Wherever there's adversity, wherever there's a little pressure, wherever it it, it doesn't feel, it's tight, but it's right. There's growth there. That's how you know you're growing. Unfortunately, again, that's one of life's, mechanisms is it hurts to grow and many of us we want to grow but we don't want to go through the pain we 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 we, we want to make the big dollars but we don't want to go through what it takes to make those big dollars we just want them to come to us everybody wants a check but nobody wants to deal with management no one wants to deal with the headaches that come with responsibility and large obligation we don't want to deal with it it hurts it brings anxiety it brings sleepless nights it brings stress what do you do when what used to satisfy you and do it for you, it isn't working anymore. In fact, I would say that that is a hallmark of growth because what once soothed you, comforted you, is no longer having the same effect because mentally, Emotionally, psychologically, you're in a different place. You're a different person altogether. And we don't see our growth. We just look up and see that we've grown. You know, it's kind of like we're all growing. And, and, and change is happening every single second, every single day. Whether we like it or not. You cannot control change, baby. Change is going to happen whether you like it or not. But it's like, you know, you look up, go back and look at some of your, you know, after you listen to this sometime in the next day or two, go back and look at some old pictures. I mean, really go back, get in the, in the, go back in the crates and just go back and look at some pictures of you when you were four years old. If you have them, look at pictures of you when, when you were a kindergartner or preschool, and then go back and look at pictures of you throughout elementary school and, and when you were a kid and, and, and think about what it was like to be eight or nine years old coming home from school and the cartoons and Saturday morning and, and cereal and riding the bike without any concerns. And then go back and think about high school. Think about high school. Think about when you had your first girlfriend or your first boyfriend or when you first learned how to drive, how important that was to you. And and, and and go back and really think about the things that were troubling for you as a kid and you can look back at it now and say, wow, you know, I can't believe I stayed up and I had sleepless nights over that shit. You know, I couldn't, I, I, I can't believe I used to allow someone to bully me or I can't believe I used to stay up petrified over this geometry test or or, or, or this algebra exam or writing this paper and, 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 and go back and just look at how much you've overcome. Look at how much you've achieved because you are great in your own way. You may not be great on the level of an Oprah or great on the level of a Bill Gates or a Warren Buffett or a Serena Williams uh, but you are great because you've overcome a whole lot of shit. And the same way you've overcome all that stuff, you have to use the psychology of what got you through all of that growth to continue to get through this growth. The test doesn't change. It seems like it changes. 
Because it's something we don't know. It's the unknown. But the test, when I say the test does not change. What I mean is what you do to, to, to solve the growth problem is the same. Whether you're four or 14 or 24 or 34 or 44 or 64. It's the same study habits need to be relearned, if you will. Growth, this is a requirement of life. It's inevitable. You're always going to go through these periods and these seasons of growth, decline, plateau. Growth, decline, plateau. Growth, decline, plateau. Or for you, it may be plateau, plateau, growth. Plateau, plateau, growth. Plateau, plateau, decline. Growth, 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 plateau. Do you get what I'm saying? But it, it's never going to always be plateau. It's never going to be all growth. It's never going to be all decline. Because life is cyclical. And growth is built into. It's built into nature. Growth is built into nature. In fact, it has a mathematical formula. Many of you are already familiar with this concept. Somebody asked me uh, the other day when I was uh, when I when I mentioned in the last podcast about when Nicole, Nikola Tesla says, you know, uh, if, if you can understand three, six, and nine, you'll understand, you know, everything in the cosmos in the universe. And this has something to do with it. Nature's code for growth. Nature's code for growth is the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence or the golden mean is sacred geometry. And it's in everything. It's found everywhere in nature. Everywhere in nature. And in fact, it is found in our, it's found in our socioeconomic system. It's found in politics it's found in business it is found in everything that is organic that is from the sunflower to the way your hair grows it's found in everything from if you cut a banana and you and you see that little pattern that is the fibonacci sequence if you look at a pine cone the way the little thistles grow that is the fibonacci sequence if you take a look at a sunflower, a good look in the center of it, and the way the, the, the you know the way the little sunflower seeds grow, that is the Fibonacci sequence. Take a good look at your hair. You can cut all your hair off, and the way it grows back, that spiral pattern, that's the Fibonacci sequence. And this is nature's cold. Cold is in everything. I've said it before. There's cold in, in even in some of our ancient, ancient relics. In the great pyramids of Giza. There's cold. There's mathematics there. The way it aligns with the sun. And the constellations. There's cold embedded in the Bible. There's cold embedded in the Quran. There's cold embedded in the seasons there's cold embedded in the way the stars are aligned there is a there's a code in that and the brilliant wise of us learn to decode these uh you know systems and and and, and translate what they mean for you and what they're saying so without me trying to get too deep and talk over anyone's head which is never my intention understand that growth must happen Every step towards the next level in your life comes from that which comes before it. So sometime today or the next day, I want you to Google the Fibonacci sequence. F-I-B-O-N-A-C-C-I. It's not very ancient science. 
but it's pretty accurate. And once you understand the Fibonacci sequence and the way it acts in nature, you will understand that basically the mathematical breakdown of it, it says that everything requires two steps before it. So where you are today is because of the last couple of things that happened to you. Just like you can't just end up in 10th grade without having gone through 9th grade, 8th grade, 7th grade, hell, any of that before, before, right? You can't even, you cannot skip elementary school and end up in high school. You cannot skip the rudimentary basic elements, the basic building blocks and just move on up. And the problem with a lot of us is we see the greats. We see, we see the ballers. We see, we see the people who are seemingly on the top with all their money and their wealth and their power and they getting it. You know, people love them. People follow them. People admire them. They just seem like they have it all together and they just, I mean, but you don't know their Fibonacci sequence. You don't know the steps they had to take to get to where they are now. And you don't know how they dealt with adversity. And I'm saying to you that this plateau period that I talk about, it requires you to learn. You must keep learning new things and you must keep a you must keep abreast of all of the changing trends not just in the world, but in your in your life. Um sometimes when I say you must keep learning and learning new new things and newer things, I'm not just talking about, you know, um, shit that pertains to your job or your career. You know, a lot of times they'll say, well, if you're not making that much money, go back to school, you know, get a degree or get another degree. Uh, if you're in coding, you know, go back and get some more certification, get some, get some more licenses under your belt. That's great. I'm not saying don't do that. That's wonderful. Cause you can never be too educated. You can never have read too many books. I promise you, it's only going to benefit you. It's only going to grow you. It's only going to uh, impact impact your financial bottom line because the more you learn the more you are going to earn and don't let anyone tell you differently don't let anyone tell you different and and guess what you have to start focusing on what you learn because you get paid based on what you know from the neck up i've said it before and i'm not trying to be mean But if you make a living based on what you do from the neck down, things with your hands, physical labor, customer service, having to be on your feet, having to serve, you know, the public, your, your money is, your income is always going to be limited because anybody can do that. You can get anybody to serve a plate. You can get anybody to punch in some numbers on a cash register. You can get just about anybody to go sit in an office and answer a phone and shift papers around. But when you know shit that nobody else knows, or you know more shit than other people know, and you keep learning more and more than the average person knows, you're going to get paid for that. People are going to seek you out. They're going to find you. You are going to elevate yourself based on what you know. And your gifts will always make room for you. Meaning, what your gifts and your talents are. When you combine your natural raw talent. You need more than that, really. But when you combine your natural raw talent. The shit you are just naturally good at. And you continue to learn new things. And how to market your skills and abilities. And you learn more skills. And you learn more shit. And you tighten up on how you do things. That will take you all over the world. It'll take you all over the world. Understand with new knowledge, you get new ideas. With new ideas, it puts you into different states of mind. Different mindset. 
And with different newer mindset, you get different newer results. But it starts with the knowledge. Get the knowledge. Get the new ideas. And that's going to lead to new results. Look at all the world's self-made billionaires. Well, I wouldn't say all of them, but the most popular known ones, right? Self-made. Not born into it, not like Sam Walton's kids. I don't like to include them because, I mean, they were born into it. But look at the world's self, self-made billionaires. Just, I can name a couple off the top. Warren Buffett reads 500 pages a day. And that's just what he's telling us. Bill Gates says he reads a book a week at least. And if you follow him at all, all he does is try to tell people different books you should read. At this point in his life, he's straight, you know, philanthropic. So he's like, look, these are the books that I'm reading. These are the books that I've read this year. This is the shit I'm on. You can get on it. I mean, he obviously doesn't say it in those words, but he's about getting knowledge and information. His business is based on information. Look at Oprah. She just loves books, period. And that should tell you something. All these people with all this money, and I know this for a fact. I've gone to different people's homes. And all the people I know who make six figures and greater, and I'm not talking about new money or old money for that matter. I'm talking about people who have built themselves up from the bottom up, from the ground up, built themselves up, started with nothing. And you go to their house, they're going to have some bookcases. They're going to have a bookshelf. They're going to have some books and it's not just romance novels and, 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 you know, fluff. They got some good shit and that's not a coincidence. And I just can't understand for the life of me why so many people just refuse to read. You got to get the information. That's how you get over your hump. That's how you get over your plateau. There are books that can tell you how to get over, how to get through, how to get under, how to avoid it altogether. Shit. But you have to get the information. You can't get, you can't get from here to there without the plateau. And so understand the plateau is the bridge. That's on the way to great. On the way to greatness is the plateau, which is the bridge. And understand you'll need to take massive, massive action. Because in the process of taking massive, massive action, you're going to fall on your face. Good. It's okay. Fail and fail fast and get it over with. You know, people say, I don't want to fail. I'm afraid. Hate to break it to you, you you're gonna fail at least once. You're gonna fall. You're gonna fall on your face at least once. Get it over with. Get it done with, so you can move on. We're talking about the psychology, the mindset of the great, of greatness. Psychology of greatness. The greats all know that growth and 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 even failure to an extent all help to move the needle of life. That's what life is about, is growth, decline, plateau. It's the seasons. It's the Fibonacci sequence. It's the great golden mean. It's the spiral. It's built into nature and it's required of you. Your greatest commodity is your effect on others. When you die, no one is going to be like, oh, you know what? He used to have the coldest Jordans. She always had her hair laid for the gods. They're not going to say that, I promise. Maybe one, maybe somebody might say it. 
But nine times out of 10, they're going to talk about how you made them feel. Are you someone who gets around people when you come in and walk in a room? Do you darken that room or do you brighten that room? Do you speak truth to power? Do you speak greatness into people? Do you motivate people? Do you inspire them? Or do you drain people? Are you like a wet dish rag or are you effervescent? It has nothing to do with the way you look. It has very little to do with your physical appearance. It's how you affect others. And you have to get strategic with your ability to affect others because everything that you want, you're going to get it through another person. Things don't just fall out of the sky. New cars don't fall from the sky. New homes do not fall from the sky. New opportunities and careers and jobs do not fall like manna from heaven. We don't get clients and customers and business and money into our bank accounts from out of the ether. So come out of the clouds. Everything that you want is going to come either through what you know or who you know. And if it's coming through who you know, it's going to be based on your effect on them. Some people get very far in life because they know a lot of the right people to help them strategically get in position. So play your position. If you're in a space of plateau right now, listen to me, listen, listen to me. If you're in a space of plateau, you have to get strategic about your relationships. Who do you know who can help you? Who are the people that are around you who are pulling you down? They can even be family and friends. I hate to say it, sometimes our greatest drains are the people closest to us. You can be laying in bed with your biggest enemy. And though you love them, it might be time to let them go because they are not trying to see you elevate. And they are not contributing to the cause. And if you know in your heart of hearts that that is the case, you have to play your position. You have to get strategic. Don't rush the process. Trust the process. It's part of the Fibonacci sequence. Your ultimate purpose is available to you at any time. But you got to know what it is. And the one thing about adversity that the greats know is that it should not change your ultimate outcome, your ultimate destination. You know, people say you have to love the journey. You do. But you're not going to love every single step of your journey. You know, even when you take a road trip, I like to, you know, I love the trip from coast to coast across continental North America, the United States from coast to coast is a beautiful, beautiful drive. But you're not going to love that whole damn drive because I'm going to say it's a couple of states that are just ugly to me. There are some beautiful states that will change your entire outlook on life. They're so beautiful. Like New Mexico is so freaking beautiful. Phoenix is beautiful. New Orleans, Louisiana is gorgeous. Georgia is gorgeous. Florida is beautiful. South Carolina, not so much. It's some parts of Texas. I'm good. Tennessee is some parts. I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> but you're not gonna enjoy every single mile of your journey. And there are going to be those aspects of your journey that, you know, are painful or boring or you just, like I said, it's just not working for you. Don't throw the whole baby out with the bathwater and say, fuck it, you know, I'm done with all this shit. I don't even want this shit. No, you, you can't do that. You have to always remind yourself 
what the ultimate goal is, what your ultimate purpose is, why you're doing this. Stay focused on your actual goals. Because I'm talking about now, how do you get from, okay, I set my goals, I have my vision board, I have my affirmations, but I'm just not feeling this shit right now. To getting past that and getting to, I'm where I want to be. And even when you get to where you want to be, you still are going to have days where there is some plateau in there. But come hell or high water, you will survive no matter what it is. You will survive if it's not killing you. I promise you it's building you. And when you get to the end, later in life, you're going to be like, you know what? I, I Now I see why I had to go through that. Because if I wouldn't have gone through that, I wouldn't know how to deal with this shit. It was... When you got to senior year of high school that you understood all the shit you had to go through in 11th grade and the 10th grade and the 9th grade and being a scrub, being a freshman, being teased, the pimples, the braces, all of that goodness, right? Puberty all together. But as an adult, and you're all beautiful and grown up and as they say, glowed up, it makes sense. So, embrace the plateau. It's a part of the growth process. And embrace the psychology of the great. And you have to keep learning new shit. You have to keep reading the books. You have to keep taking the classes. You have to keep going to the conferences and the seminars. You have to get around the people who are going to stretch you and stretch the way you think and stretch the shit you think about. Everything you're going through is to prepare you and to strengthen you for what's about to come. It is your Fibonacci sequence. So don't get bitter. Don't get angry. Don't get mad. As my son says, you mad or not? You big mad or not? Don't get mad. Ask yourself and ask the higher power, what's my next move? What am I supposed to learn? I love it. I love it when Oprah says, Oprah says, when you're going through it, you have to get still and ask yourself, what am I supposed to learn? Because there's always something in it that life is trying to teach you. Remember I said, it's some shit that's built into life, but it's always ultimately, always ultimately for your greatest good. Unless it kills you. Once it kills you, once you're dead, then you knew that was your final, that was your final exam. But your growth is happening in the darkness. That is when our growth happens. And if you don't get anything else out of the psychology of greatness and what the greats all know is that your growth is happening in the darkness, in the midst of the adversity, you are growing. Where are you in your life and where do you want to go? And stay focused on that, not on the actual obstacles. Not on the fact that clients aren't calling you and customers aren't, aren't popping. Not on the fact that you might be going through it with, with in your relationship. Where are you in your life and ultimately where do you want to go? Those are the only two things you need to focus on and getting to bridge that gap. Separate the vehicle from the outcome. Don't, don't pay attention to the vehicle. We don't care how it gets us there just as long as it gets us there. And a lot of us, we're too bougie and stuck up. We don't wanna take a certain vehicle cause we're not feeling the vehicle even though that vehicle is gonna get you to where you need to go. Separate the vehicle. How life is getting you there is not your business. What is your gift to the world? Are you walking in alignment with that gift? And remember your Fibonacci sequence. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next week. Peace and blessings.